Hey guys, welcome back to the Summer of Knives 2017. I would be absolutely remiss if I did not put in multi-tools into this segment. Okay, so I know that it just doesn't have one blade, but I think ideally if we are modern people, we like to carry conveniences or tools that will help us out in everyday life and if we are someone that is in the military a police officer someone that goes out into the field that goes hunting that type of thing it is a more convenient way to carry the tools that we need to survive to help hunt to uh, make shelter uh, and if you're a military person obviously um, to go to combat in a small package uh, you know carrying a big satchel with a whole bunch of hand tools is probably not going to cut it in any environment anymore. So what I have here is my collection and uh, it's a lot of stuff so I'm going to try to go through it real quickly and I'm sure I'm going to get some stuff wrong. I don't have all the names specifically because such as um, the Swiss Army Knives they could add one or two tools or take one or two tools out and call it something completely different. So it's very hard to uh, figure out which blade is which or which multi-tool is which other than the boxes. So you see these boxes up here. I have some of them that I still have the boxes for because I plan to use it as a collection, not as a, um, not as a user type deal. And there are specific items that I look for in a multi-tool and will also go with that. The first tool that I'm going to pick up is my Boy Scouts of American knife. These are very cheap knives made in China. You can buy them on Amazon. Alright, so you can see right there, it says Boy Scouts of America. Let's see if I can bring it in a little bit closer. And try not to get the... Uh, and... I had one of these, they were in blue, I guess because it was Cub Scouts America, not Boy Scouts of America. Uh, certain age groups have different uh, classifications, I guess. And this is the first multi-tool that I ever had. It has, or had, two blades on it. This has like an awl. This also has a screwdriver. It has a can opener on it. And I think it has a screwdriver bottle opener. All right, so that's pretty much it. And you can get that anywhere on Amazon.com right now. And it was a very cool pocket knife. The only thing about this knife is if you were somebody that was out in the woods, you know that when you're using this blade, it can close on you. And I could tell you many a scars where I was using this blade to cut. And right there, boom, right on the finger, closed on the finger, cut my finger really bad. So, that being said, I try to tend to stay away from that knife as much as possible. It's a nice little collector's piece, but I probably wouldn't use it any longer. U.S. military actually got on board with the multi-knife or multi-tool, uh, multi and Camillus came up with this, which is a military-produced, or I should say contracted, by Camillus to come up with something very similar. And as you can see, it has just the regular, basic, everyday tools that a soldier would use. So if you got to open, now I know we use MREs, so we don't use canned goods anymore. But at one time, the military heavily used uh, cans or canned products. So much needed there. Uh, it has an all screwdriver, one blade, and that's it. And what's really cool about this is it does have a uh, large lanyard loop or metal loop I would say so that's excellent um, <clears throat> the uh, US military and Boy Scouts of America weren't the only ones that came up with it this is called a I want to call this a marlin hook or fisherman's hook <clears throat> and what this does is this allows this is mostly a fishing multi-tool and what this does is it allows you to get the hooks out of the uh, out of the fish's mouth relatively quickly. You could also use it for nets if you needed to use it for nets. A uh, lot of different options with this tool right here. And what I liked about this is this one actually does have a lock. See this little piece right here? If you pull it back, it'll release the lock and it won't open on you. So that's a really cool fishing knife. Now when it gets into the Swiss Army knives. There are a couple different kinds. Uh, I tend to stay with just the Swiss Army knives made by Swiss. 
uh, it says Swiss Army on it and you could always tell Swiss Army uh, mostly because it has the symbol on there okay as you can see the symbol on there there are I think there's another one called Wettlers or Wettlers or something like that and they make similar items and you could always get the cheap Chinese knockoffs which I do not recommend those the cheap Chinese knockoffs are terrible knives they don't hold a blade now when I look for in a Swiss Army knife and actually the Swiss Army does carry these knives this is the Swiss Army knife I guess soldiers knife and what I like about this is it has a lockup. Okay, a lot of the Swiss Army knives do not have a lockup. This has a liner's lock. It is partially serrated. I also have one that is not partially serrated. You are able to open it with one hand, which I'm a big fan of. It has most of the tools that, again, a soldier would need. All right, so we're not getting that far away from it. All right, it has a saw in here, Phillips screwdriver, and I think that's an. Uh, an awl. So if you don't really know what an awl is, anytime um, you have to make a puncture or a hole in some type of equipment, be it a leather belt or a webbed belt, the awl will, will let you punch right through it. So that's what that is right there. And of course, you always have your tweezers on one side and you will have your toothpick on the other. All right. So that's pretty much what I'm looking at as far as a Swiss Army knife or something that has multiple tools in it. I want something with a locking blade on it. I like a saw. I do like a file on it. But if the blade doesn't lock and it's going to lock back on your finger, then ideally what you have is a knife that you can use for small tasks such as cooking and preparing food or fish. Uh, it's not going to be good for any type of woodwork because if you have worked any type of wood in your life you know that eventually you're gonna dig the wrong way or you're gonna twist your wrist the wrong way and that knife is gonna come slamming back on your finger and it is gonna make a really nasty gash now a lot of the Swiss Army knives they are not just woods knives what I really do like about Swiss Army is that they also incorporated a very small pliers which is extremely useful this I think is the tinkerer and what I like about the Tinker is mostly made for urban environments. Now it does have this, which I think, if I'm right, is a fish hook remover, which I thought was cool. There's no writing on it. Um, has the awl, has the two knives, it has basically the whole set. And there are different versions. And again, if I get it wrong, I apologize. But these are very small pocket sized knives. And a lot of the Swiss Army knives or multi-tools that you will find are not illegal in almost every state. So it, there's nothing illegal about any of these knives. These are considered pocket knives. They're not considered gravity knives or anything like that. And you are allowed to carry these even in, even in the states where they don't allow you to carry pretty much anything. A couple different versions. This is probably the smallest pocket knife that Swiss Army makes. And it has like a cuticle scissors in here really cool really tiny keychain I think they call this one the classic um, super tiny it's a keychain and I really like it for the nostalgia now they did come out with a couple really good knives that um, I really like this is the uh, farmer version they came out with like an anodized anod I think it's anodized or uh, it's aluminum I think it's aluminum or I don't know what the story is but these knives do not lock, but they look really, really cool. And if you're looking for something like a pocket knife that doesn't have the traditional red or black, these are really nice. They're really thin, really nice to carry, and again, really thin. This is the smaller version of it, which I think is just one blade or two blades. Really small. This has the nail file in it. All right, so, and I know a lot of people will say this, and, and I really... I know it is a reason for the corkscrew, the ambiguous corkscrew. A lot of people say, why do you need a corkscrew if you're going to use it for essentially wood stuff? And you're right, you probably don't need that. But on the other hand, uh, this one has a Phillips screwdriver. So other than gear, you might be looking at something, let's say, you know, you got off the trail for a minute. You found a bottle of wine. I don't know if you ever tried to take a cork out of a bottle of wine without a corkscrew. It usually winds up falling in the bottle or getting really messed up. 
you know, to each his own. I mean, if you're that desperate for wine, hey, to each his own. So just a couple different versions here. This happens to be in black. This happens to be in red. This has a lot of tools in it, as you can see. Uh, this one, I think, is the uh, Victoria Swiss, Victoria Knox Swiss Army Champ Pocket. Okay, so one's in black, one's in red. Has a lot of cool tools on here. And one of the ones that I did like is the fact that it had a magnifying glass on there. All right. What's cool about the magnifying glass is not only can you see better, but ideally you can start fires with it. I don't know anybody who's actually done that, but this has all the tools that I like. It has a saw, it has a knife. Again, the problem with these tools is they do not have locking blades. Now, I have some with locking blades, which I am going to go over in a second. Then Swiss Army, in order to keep selling more Swiss Army products, got real fancy with the uh, the blue. And I know you can get these with, I think I bought one for a friend. This is called the Cyber, Cyber Tool, <laughs> believe it or not. It actually has a Torx bit wrench, which is really cool. And it has a whole bunch of bits inside there as well. There are all types of Torx and, and screwdrivers. And this is something, if you are an IT guy, you would probably want. Uh, again, small knives, uh, pliers, probably, you know, again, corkscrew, you know, okay. So maybe when you're done, you can open up a bottle of wine. But most of the tools repeat themselves if you are familiar with it. Now, this knife I have carried, and I have some of them opened already. This, I believe, is, uh, I think it's the Swiss Camp Champ or something like that. But what I liked about this is this has a three-inch locking blade now this is the type of knife that I would take out into the field I'm not doing a lot of heavy wood processing but this is the knife that I would take out to use as my food prep knife and um, I know a lot of people have a one tool option but if you're going to gut a fish or something like that you might not want to use a six inch knife this will definitely do it for you and it's easily cleaned now all the blade steels in Swiss Army is primarily a 440 steel which means that it is a stainless steel 440 or 154 cm something along those lines I'm sure the Swiss has a name for it whatever the case is but ideally this has a locking blade okay which is very nice and this will help you in a lot of a lot of different areas where you need a locking blade nice pliers Again, this has a file on one side. This is very good texture. So now, let's say you're out in the field and you took a, a nice chunk out of your axe or out of your machete. This is where that kind of comes into play. So really cool. Uh, if you are somebody that uses, uh, oh, you forgot your saw, this will take down a sapling or probably anything around two inches thick. Not bad, good to have. Uh, this also has scissors in it, all right? The scissors in it are outstanding. They're pretty sharp. I've used these before in the past, mostly to cut my toenails or fingernails, but you can use it for any type of gear prep or repair. And of course, cane openers and such. Now, I know, like I said before, there are a lot of people that take canned items out into the field, but don't take a can opener. And I've done that before in the past. I wind up taking my K-Bar knife and digging a hole in it. Uh, it would have probably would have been a lot more efficient to just take one of these knives. Now there is a certain way sometimes to close these knives because they have to fit in a certain way. All right, so that has to go all the way down. Screwdriver hand. And what I had done here is I also added some 550 cords. So. Enough about the Swiss Army knives. I think they're great as a multi-tool option. These are just some of the collections I have. I don't have a whole bunch of them, but ideally I like the ones with the locking blades and that's why these are open. I just wanted to show you that essentially what they do is, if you look at these, they're very similar, okay? Very similar in size, very similar in price. The only difference here is this one does not have a file. Okay, and if that's really important to you, that might be something you want to look at. So when I shop for these on Amazon, I look for very specific things. I want a large locking blade with good quality. The Swiss Army um, wood saw 
some type of uh, file because again sharpening and a plier is excellent out in the field it's excellent I've even removed splinters with these pliers before and of course all the bits that come with it is a uh, you know small small bit large bit flat head that kind of thing is excellent so to me the Swiss Army knife if you were not going to carry a Leatherman or a Gerber tool is outstanding you cannot go wrong with that they've been carrying that before Leatherman even was a company alright let's talk about the multiplier or the multi tool multiplier what I'm going to tell you is this is a cheap one right here this is made by Husky it came in a set do not buy cheap multi tools spend the money if it's seventy dollars or eighty dollars and you think you're getting ripped off trust me you are not I'm gonna tell you a story uh, with my Leatherman wave I had a Leatherman wave it was an old one I got it in the uh, post exchange when I was in the Marine Corps um, I lost it I couldn't find it for a long time and then through the years I finally came up with it it was so badly damaged that none of the um, I'm sorry the the blade would flip out this way so there was no lock up whatsoever so when I pulled out this blade and it came out it would just flip over and it had no retention because I, I used it a lot and then of course when it got lost in storage it got beat up so I sent it back to Leatherman and they basically said listen we don't make this model anymore do you want us to repair it or we'll just ship you the new one the new version of it and I'm like you know what I kind of have a little nostalgia for it, but you know what? I mean, it's a tool, and I like to beat up my tool, so give me the new one. They shipped it, no questions asked. That's what you get with a good quality company with making good quality tools. This, on the other hand, is made by Husky, and I have nothing against Husky. They do make cheap China-produced tools, um, you know, wrenches, that kind of thing. If you're a mechanic, you've probably seen this before, some type of carpenter, and these are not expensive. They are not now, the difference is that a lot of the tools, again, do not lock, okay? So, you can probably close this down and use it, but you see the size of the saw. I don't know what you're sawing with with a two-inch bit. In my own opinion, I, I really don't understand that aspect of it, but again, you're paying half the price. Uh, usually, the tools are probably not the best as far as heat treatment and knives and all that like this isn't even sharp all right this blade is brand new it's not even sharp uh, this does have a little spring inside which probably you can see the spring right there which probably at some point will break or snap now this is the type of multi-tool that you will find in my vehicle because if somebody breaks in I don't care if it gets stolen all right if you want to use it as a truck multi-tool or you want to throw it in something great I would not recommend this in a bug out bag and I'm gonna tell you why because if you are bugging out and you have to depend on that tool to do everything let's say you, you forgot your knife or whatever the case you do not want a piece of junk like this and then you're gonna to have to risk your life or find another tool option okay so buy something of good quality okay if you are gonna get a multi-tool all right, enough about that. Now, when I was in the military, a lot of the tools that you see here um, had contracts with the military. So Gerber actually had contracts with the military. So did Benchmade. So did a lot of different companies. This is the EOD tool. Okay, it's made by Gerber. They issued these out to all the Marines. And if you don't know what this is, this spike right here, this is for C4. It's to put a hole in C4 and then you could put the blasting cap in. So Gerber was very smart when they contracted with the military because they knew that they can sell a lot of these. Okay, so and if you don't know anything about the military, uh, once you get that contract, you know it's probably uh, going to be there for quite some time. Now, it's not a bad tool. It does not have any outside any outside type of uh, tools that are specific so you can't flip it out like you can on a Leatherman wave there's no outside the uh, tool option this right here is removable so this has a masonry bit on here but you can change that I find that Gerber tools in general are made cheaply uh, it, it's not anything against them I think that if you wanted to go a cheaper route you can this does have a lock up blade 
which is nice. So this is the lockup release. All right. And if you were a soldier or a marine, I know for a fact that these were handed out and you would probably get it for free, so you're not really going to complain about it, all right? Uh, these are crimping pliers, all right? So you got to crimp the blasting cap. It does have uh, some type of cutter there, and of course, it has the needle nose pliers. Now, the biggest selling point on Gerber multi tools is that you can open it with one hand, whereas the Leatherman's you cannot. Uh, you need both hands, or you got to try to flip it out. So that was the big selling point was that you can open it with one hand and I think the military like that a lot. Now, uh, just to show you that I'm not a, a snob um, when it comes to multi-tools, uh, I did go out and purchase my own multi-tools, right? So this is Gerber's, I think it's just their regular, I don't even know the name or the model, but as you can see here, this one does come in stainless steel and, it, and both sides do have a lock. This is like their classic version of it. Okay, so you have uh, wires, wire clippers here that are uh, that will cut wire uh, pliers and a needle nose, and you have the basic tools in here that will lock. All right, this one happens to have a scissor, which is kind of small. I don't know. That's super tiny. I don't know what that's for. Uh, you know, basic tools in here, pliers, all that kind of stuff. Um, not bad. Uh, let me push the lock. I know that SOG also got into the game, and I'll talk about SOG in one second. All right, the thing I didn't like about Gerber specifically is that usually because of the design where this is inside the handle, there's not a lot of big tools that you can put on the outside. That's just the way it goes, okay? Uh, so, and they're very similar. So again, you could remove this if you wanted to and put a saw blade in there. I think it's a, a jigsaw blade will fit in there and this is the tool option that I was talking about um, you can if you want buy the external set of bit driver so this is a bit driver set and what you would do is you would take this and oops wrong side let's see if I get it right okay it would fit on there like that and then you would take whatever bit driver you wanted to and put it in there okay so that becomes an extension of your multi-tool but the thing I did not like about this is that there's no type of retention here there's no ball joint like in a socket wrench there's a little ball detent that will keep it in there so if you're working from the bottom and you're trying to work upside down this thing can fall out and then you lose it and it's a big pain in the ass so good on you for innovation um, however there's very little retention on that which um, you know it doesn't matter for me when I think when I'm at the range or something like that I usually take one of these tools again Gerber is a little bit cheaper than the Leatherman but it's still a good tool and I don't mind going to the range or something like that with this uh, this happens to be the diesel and I don't think there's much difference between <laughs> the diesel and the uh, the uh, regular version of it um, the pouches are a little bit different, so if you do order one with the extra bits, they're going to give you another pouch, all right? They're going to give you the pouch that actually accepts it. And, you know, again, ultimately, it's not really a big deal. Any of these multi-tools will do good. So if you are someone that's looking for a multi-tool that really can't afford maybe a Leatherman or, or something like that, uh, you can't really go wrong with a Gerber. I think that uh, it is a cheaper option. But for me, Leatherman's going to be the way to go. Now, I did mention something about SOG or SOG. I did have one SOG, and I can tell you that I hated it. I loved it and hated it. I love the fact that the outside uh, blades were, I think they're spring-loaded, or it wasn't a switchblade. But what I liked about it is that when you flipped it, it would come out. So it was more along the lines of that uh, uh, what the hell they call that fast action or whatever the hell they call it I can't remember the name now but if you aren't a, a Kershaw you know exactly what I'm talking about uh, the fast action or, or spring action or whatever the hell they call it but that would flip out and and it was nice but the stu the, the tool itself was very flimsy made um, which is why I didn't I don't have any SOG I sold it I think it looks cool and I think SOG is on that medium where it's all overseas produced cheap stuff 
and I hate to say that but honestly I do not have a lot of SOG products specifically for that because uh, they're made flimsy, they're made with a cheaper steel and yeah you get a great price and a cool looking design but if they actually put a little bit more steel or metallurgy in there uh, for me it would work out a lot better. Again that's just my opinion okay I know there's a lot of people that like SOG and I'll get a bunch of hate mail but other tools that are available uh, this is the Boker and they call this a, a cops tool and I guess ideally you're supposed to clip this onto your belt or your duty belt um, not bad it has like this G10 right here some jimping on on the back and I think this is a rescue tool which kind of fits in the theme of a multi-tool it has multiple tools on it so it has this chisel point right here it has serrations if you have to you know use that part it has a seatbelt cutter which ideally if somebody was in a wreck you would probably want to cut them out and if you put it in the sheath all right you can see that it has a window breaker so if you needed to get somebody out of a car you could use that as well so I think that's a nice job on Boker it's it's a one-piece multi-tool it doesn't come with a lot of different uh, folding things but you know what not so bad this is something that I wanted to go over as well I think CR yep this is uh, CRKT and CRKT makes this uh, I forget the name of it uh, let's see it's called the Sparrot Tool, Tabor Sparrot Tool. Let me just see if you can see that right there. Um, and I consider this a multi-tool, obviously, for what it is. It's a multi-tool. It's a multi-tool option. It has a sharp sheep's, I think I call that a sheep's foot blade. Uh, you can hold it really tightly so you don't cut yourself. Um, this right here is a bottle opener. This is a nail pry and it does come with let me put the sheath back on so I don't get cut it does come with this rubber insert which holds the bit so if you needed to use a bit to I don't know screw screw the nail in or whatever the case is you can do that it has a typical ruler on it and some jimping on there so I thought it was cool no, normally people this came with like a neck lanyard again not big for me but why not um, this is something that you would probably find on a keychain again multi-tool this came from Leatherman has the hex bit right there bottle opener and I think that's pretty much it it's not a big multi-tool but honestly if you need to open some beers and you didn't have a church key uh, I'll, honestly it would probably work small carabiner type deal not a bad little piece but you know to each his own. Alright, so let's get into the Leatherman because I've been talking about it for a while and I'm a big fan of Leatherman, obviously you can see. Now the differences you're going to see on these Leathermans is very simple. They either come in satin finish or they come in a black oxide. Black oxide is typically for military applications. In my own opinion, I believe that this is the better way to go if you are in the military. Um, I myself have been trained as a United States Marine Corps Scout Sniper and I could tell you very much the thing that we look for is movement and shiny objects so if you have this on an LBV I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a lot easier to spot a thousand yards away than this is gonna to be to spot so it's one of those things where anything that shines anything that jingles uh, and any type of movement is what snipers look for so at distance it makes sense or in any military application it makes sense to have a black oxide um, multi-tool you have black oxide K bars and black oxide you know you know even your firearms are black right there's a reason for that if they were all nice and shiny uh, you know not only would you look pretty weird but you know it, it helps with the camouflage okay so just to go over a few of them here uh, Leatherman waves have been my favorite for a while. I actually have another one at work, so I have one, two, and then a third one. Um, the Surge was typically the bigger brother to the Leatherman wave, and you can tell there's a huge size difference here. All right, all right. So obviously, there's a big brother. Okay, so the big size. Now, what I like about this is the blades are bigger. Um, 
The handle is bigger, obviously. The tools are way more robust. So you have an awl, you have a screwdriver. This is typically known as the eyeglass bit. Okay, so when your eyeglasses get loose, you can tighten them up. Uh, the bits on here are interchangeable and uh, it does have locking capability which I'm a big fan of. Oh, let's turn this on the other side. So uh, on all the Leathermans they usually have a spring type lock on it. Alright so it'll, it'll come out, it'll lock and you're good to go. This one also has a clip and if you don't have one of these you can purchase it and it'll slip right in there. Um, the the multi-tool itself is robust which I like a lot but again you're talking about weight this this thing weighs man it's not light it comes with a serrated edge it also comes with interchangeable um, blades so this one again like you saw on the other one this one happens to be for wood but you can get the one for stone uh, if you want I don't know how many people are gonna be using stone implements but you know if you were making some type of spear or something like that and all you had was stone or flinting it might work out for you the blade is pretty stout on this uh, you know they're all gonna be some type of hollow grind very very sharp and this one instead of having a secondary blade I believe this one is a scissor and this is a really big badass scissor there's not many um, that come with this type of scissor, but this scissor is uh, pretty good. It's a pretty stout scissor right there. So, let's see if I can get it in all one piece. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is if, uh, uh, along with the black oxide, um, you have to also understand that if this comes off your belt um, and it's in the middle of the night, you're probably not going to find it. Whereas the nice shiny one, you probably will. So, if you're a military guy, I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm talking about if you are someone that is a civilian then um, or someone that's just a, a regular plain woodsman and likes multi-tools I would definitely go with the stainless steel that's my own opinion now the Leatherman charge this happens to be the TI or the titanium uh, what they did is they upgraded their they upgraded it all right so it's a little bit smaller than the surge it's a little bit lighter because most of it's made out of titanium this is where you start running into some big bucks because it is titanium all right so again you're gonna have most of most of the same tools as a there's a uh, the eyeglass screwdriver the regular screwdriver I see in here also the bits okay are in there this has again you can see right there it has some type of wire stripper and cutter on there alright these are not removable but again excellent blade and then on the outside it's gonna have the typical now when you upgrade to a better or more expensive Leatherman they're gonna start changing the steel so typically the blade steels are 440 or 154 cm this happens to be S30V so this blade is uh, made out of the super steel and it's probably going to last you a lot longer okay so really nice titanium or the tie this happens to have a gut hook on it alright so, and this happens to have a serrated edge with the gut hook so that's kind of a new tool and this one has a regular file on this side and a diamond file on this side so there is a difference alright so the regular files for metal and then if you want to sharpen your knives you absolutely can with the diamond file alright so that's kinda cool and when it comes to bits Leatherman does sell a whole bunch of crazy bits so this is the Leatherman package they usually come in very very thin and, and of course you could fit them pretty much anywhere they're very thin but ideally what they do is you put the tool inside one of these cases and then you can slip you can slip the tool carrier or the bit carrier in the back okay you can see that and then what you would do is flip this in here and uh, if I can fit it in there it's a little tight but you could fit it in there and then you would have your whole package ready to go on your belt also when it comes to cases there's a whole bunch of different ones and I'll show you that in a minute but I thought that was kinda cool now if you're looking for some lighter options uh, this happens to be the rebar made by Leatherman. It is a lighter, um, smaller option. It's uh, 
does have some really cool locking tools again big fan of the locking tools the blades that are in here alright so that's really cool let me see if I can close this without hurting myself uh, on this and a lot of other models you can see that this has removable wire cutters okay these are made at 154 cm and the idea is, is that even on these other models such as the wave all right you can see they are not removable so once these get dull or broken you cannot use them anymore whereas on these you can you just call up Leatherman or, or go on their website and you go and you get uh, new replacements so this is a nice one right here comes with all the features that I like uh, some tools some all does have an aggressive file on there and the only thing this does not have is the belt clip and I want to talk a little bit about that some of the belt clips came in as an aftermarket so if you are used to the older Leathermans they're probably not much of an option but the newer Leathermans have this piece right here that you can buy online and they come in different colors and you can it's an aftermarket purchase and you could just slip it in and it works really well alright some of the ones that come now and this is the one I EDC a lot is uh, this actually comes with it and as you can see it is not an aftermarket although you can take it off if that bothers you and this is probably the only Leatherman I think the sidekick and the wingman or the other one it's a smaller version of everything you have here but this is the only one that actually has spring actuated pliers okay so that's really neat and uh, it's very lightweight it does have some of the tools that I like it is not the uh, it is not the wave by any chance uh, it does have smaller tools to work with so if you are more of an urban environment or you don't want to carry a large multi-tool this is not so bad alright so you can see the blades are you know quite small but again if you're carrying other gear this might be a way to go now when I talk about super small this is the Leatherman Juice. This happens to be my wife's. And this is probably the only size I can get her to actually carry or put it in her pack. Uh, it's super tiny. I mean, you could just see in comparison to the Wave, because I know a lot of people have the Wave, uh, how tiny it is. All right, it's kind of dwarfed. But it has a lot of good features on here, and it's very well done. Uh, the lockups are really nice. They are not. A, uh, there's no lock on it per se so these these tools can close on your finger which kind of suck but all right so you can see that there's no there's no added lock up on it but what's cool about this and I, and I think what they figured out was um, a lot of the tools are on the outside and it's a little bit more it's a little more I want to say like uh, um, I, don't know, I want to say a little bit more like the Swiss Army where the tools are actually on the outside the, the, the problem here is again there's no lock up on these blades so you got to be really careful but this is made more for an urban environment or an environment where you're not going to do a lot of heavy tooling okay you can see right there that it's a pretty decent I mean it comes with a lot of stuff and if you are somebody that's trying to get your spouse into woodcraft or you know maybe a little bit more gearhead uh, you can't go wrong with a juice I mean that thing is like super tiny so easy to carry now when it comes to military applications I know someone's gonna say where'd you get your mutt alright so this was designed specifically for military uh, and AR 15s or M16 types uh, the blades are very stout they have very good lockup they're usually a very big heavy-duty blade and the thing about this is that although it has a lot of good tools on this, and this is another one that I carry to my, uh, it'll be inside my range bag. Uh, again, you could remove these. I've used this a lot. You can see it's pretty dirty. And uh, it has a lot of good features on here that are specific to guns. Um, so again, big locking blade on that side. It has a saw, also a locking blade, but this is a punch and it is removable and I've actually used this 
to not just to break down my AR-15 because you really don't need it but to move a sight so I had a Glock 19 and I put this against the Glock 19 and I was using a hammer edge uh, with another baton to basically knock the sights over and it worked pretty well so I don't I don't think anybody recommends that but it's cool uh, this has a belt clip on the side you can see that this is a hammer like I said up top it's a hammer and it also has a cutting device right here um, this tool I don't know if I can get it out has a lockup which I'm a big fan you could see this oh, there it is so it has a little pressure on there and also this is a carbon scraper all right so it won't scratch any metal on metal it's it's I think it's uh, I think it's copper or anodized something or other so it's not it's not it's made to um, clean up your bolt clean up all the carbon in your bolt and I want to say there are other if I could find them here it is there are other implements that are inside this so you can see right here if I had to push this out which is kind of a pain in the neck but you can push out another this is the number two Let's see if I can get that out so you can see it'll come out okay there's another tool right here and these are just extra bits so if you need an extra bit or a longer screwdriver you can certainly use that all right there should be one on each side and there is it's just really hard to see one's a Torx and one's this bit so this is an expensive military type version and I can tell you it is very weighty it is very heavy uh, it does come with a molly pouch was molly capable and it also if you get that option comes with the wrench all right this is one this is three eighths and this is a half inch which goes conveniently on the side and you could slap it on the molly again this is heavy duty so if you're wearing an lbv or something i think it's worth it if you are not this is going to be very heavy to try to hold on side of your belt unless it's like a battle belt or something like that I don't think you really need to go all that much into it all right uh, lastly I'm going to talk about is the Leatherman super tool and I think this super tool pretty much started everything and again this one has a, a leather molly uh, has a regular molly sheet again military application what I like about this again is that it has the tools that I like all right it has a nice locking blade has multiple bits on it um, the locking release is stout and because it's such a big tool it's a lot easier to use a lot easier to turn on them bolts or whatever you need to get loose has two blades in it it has a saw all right excellent excellent tool the wire cutters come out and i also just recently purchased the one in satin finish or, or i guess uh there you go so you can see um, excellent tool it's a little bit heavy you can see how thick that is compared to something else so let me get the uh, if you want to compare the sizes all right not necessarily an EDC although you could uh, this is the Leatherman wave all right so as you can see it's a little bit stout but when it comes to multi tools um, I always say you know purchase the tool once uh, was it buy once cry once kind of thing if you're going to buy something, buy something that's going to last you throughout the years. Don't buy something that's junk and then it breaks on you when you most likely need it. Uh, all the tools on this table I purchased myself. Like I said, I didn't buy them all at once. I bought them either when I was in the military or, or after the fact. And every single one of these tools will wind up in some type of bug out bag. Whether it's on my person or it's in the bag itself. I definitely think that everybody should have a multi-tool with them all right so that's it guys if you have a chance please go up to uh, three riverblades.com check out all the great knives and stuff that i have up there stay safe